Hey guys, it's Cece from Cece Restyled and today we're going to be doing some black glaze on this piece here. And um, what glaze does is basically kind of get down in the details and really make them pop, I like to, a lot of people like to say, or um, kind of bring them out and make them a little more, um, a little more prominent um, by creating shadows or you know a darker color or even lighter color down in the in the details and the way you do that is by applying the glaze just like you would paint it on um, paint on paint and then you want to wipe back the excess and i'm going to show you how to do that using paint couture black chiffon glaze um, just about every paint line has a glaze of some sort in various colors uh, or you can make your own by taking a small bit of paint and um, mixing it with a glazing medium or sometimes top coat and that will work as a glaze. Um, some of them work a little bit differently, but for the most part, the same process. So um, I painted this piece in two coats of Paint Couture. This is mi um, Midnight Blue down here and Ombre blended up to Peacock. So, um, the Paint Couture is an acrylic mineral paint, which um, has this very, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's a very nice velvety, buttery, smooth finish. See how there's no brush strokes? No brush strokes, um, no tricks, no uh, crazy things that you need to use or know, just brush it on and it self levels. So most chalk style paints or flat paints, if you wanna glaze them, you have to um, seal them before you glaze. And the reason why is because you want a uh, satin, semi-gloss or glossy sheen to your piece. And that way, when you go to wipe back your glaze with your cloth, it will um, it will come up and move the glaze around a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, if you don't and you have a pretty flat surface and you try to apply your glaze directly to paint, it's just gonna soak in and look a little dirty. So that's why you usually seal chalk style paints before you glaze them. But with the Paint Couture, it's an acrylic mineral paint. So it does not soak up the glaze. You don't have to seal. So you get to save an entire step of sealing the whole thing, waiting for it to dry, glazing it and sealing the whole thing again. So time saver is good because time is money, right? So we're just gonna get right into it. Um, pieces that I like to glaze usually have detail um, something that's kind of flat or not really that character not not really have that much de de uh, details or carvings or personality it, you know the glaze doesn't do a whole lot of justice for it so anything with carvings and glaze looks really good with um, uh, carvings and details looks good with glaze so the paint couture glaze is probably my favorite I've ever used it's a good glaze look how nice and thick it is thick and um, I'm pretty pretty picky about my glaze. I used to make my own and now I'm using the Paint Couture and I love it, so I don't need to make my own unless I want a custom color. So I just have a chip brush here, um, a um, flat brush. You can use any kind of brush really, it doesn't matter. And you want to make sure that you are getting down into those details. You wanna get the glaze in those details and um, the reason is because when you wipe back the excess, it gets stuck in those details and creates that shadowing that we're, I mean, that's why we're glazing. So um, you wanna make sure you get down in the details. So I'm just painting it on. And generally, if I have a large flat surface like this, what I do is I kind of go around the edges. I don't usually fill the whole thing in. Um, so it's just like I'm painting it, but I don't always fill that whole thing in with glaze. So I just kind of go around the outline and then make sure I get into my details. You pounce if you need to into those details. So you don't want to glaze the entire thing and then go back and try to wipe it. You want to work in fairly small sections at a time. Um, I'll show you about the size section we want to work in at a time. So we'll probably do about, oh, this part. Let's get some speed here. Um, I'm going to pounce into those details because you really want to get down in those. That's where you create the shadows and the, the cool oomph factor comes from. So let's go ahead and I'm pretty liberal with my glaze. You don't have to put, apply it quite as thick. You can go a little bit thinner on it if you prefer. Um, 
you know, if you go thin and you don't like how you don't, you think it's a little too subtle, you can always do a second, second glazing on it. Um, I prefer to just uh, be a little liberal and wipe it back to however dark I want my glaze. Um, after my glaze is all dry on my piece, um, after I'm done glazing it, wiping it back, and I'm ready for it to be finalized, um, I gotta let it dry, and then you will want to seal it for protection. You would be fine getting away with not sealing it um, in light traffic areas, but I like, I'm always very, very careful to do everything I can to make sure my piece is not gonna chip, peel, crack, scratch easily, anything like that. So I always seal. Okay, we pounce into those little carvings, make sure we get down in there. So I'm gonna do this pillar here, this little column corner, and that's about the largest section I'm gonna do at a time, okay? So I'm not gonna do a humongous section just uh, to this little pillar here. And some glazes you have, you know, you they dry faster, so you want an even smaller section to work on at a time. But this one, this is about the, uh, size I can get away with with paint couture glazes um, and you know it not dry up on me too quickly okay, so I'm pouncing into all those flutes and um, carving details there make sure we get in those details on the feet the feet the feet don't forget the feet All right, so now we've got our whole area covered as if, you know, it was painted. Um, I'm gonna take a lint-free cloth. I like to use old t-shirts preferably, but here at the shop, we use shop towels. Um, but lint-free is important. And I think that old t-shirts work the best. They're soft, um, but you wanna take your soft cloth and I'm not pressing super hard, okay? I'm just giving it a little bit of firm pressure and I'm wiping the excess back, okay? So you don't wanna wipe it all off. You wanna leave some of it back there. Here, let me get you a little better view. You wanna leave some of it on the piece, okay? So I like to kind of wipe off all my excess first, fairly gently, not too crazy. And then, on these flat parts like this, see how, well, first, see how I am gently wiping it back and it, see how it sticks in the cracks and crevices like that? I'll zoom in in just a second so you can see, but. Do you see how it sticks in all those cracks and crevices and that dark shadowing is happening? It's being created. That is the beauty of glazing. Dimension, it adds dimension and interest. So on these flat parts, I like to wipe my excess off the edges. First, go around the edge, wipe the excess off. I try to leave a little bit in the corners and um, so, um, edges. Okay, and then I kind of work my way in and I think, you know, the circular motion seems to work best so you don't have these um, wipe marks, you know, from your, from your cloth. If it dries up a little bit, like it is starting to do on me, I'm just gonna add a little bit more glaze to kind of reactivate that glaze that is drying up. Okay, and then just go at it again. And it's almost like you're polishing, you know, the the glaze out of the center. Um, you want to make sure you're constantly moving around your cloth so that you have a fresh part of the cloth that is not soaking glaze. Otherwise, you're just pushing around muddy glaze. So you'll want several t-shirts or shop towels at your fingertips. So I prefer the circular motion on these kind of sides of pieces, you know, that are, tend to be rectangular or square or whatever. Um, I'm going to switch towels. Okay. 
And I'm gonna move down here. Go ahead and go around the bottom. Now you can see. Go around the bottom. Again, I'm not, you know, using too much force or pressure and I'm trying to leave it, leave the glaze down in the details. So, okay, that's the important part. So you don't wanna, you know, be sticking your finger in, in down in there and trying to get all the glaze out. You want it to stick where it belongs. Okay, let's see if I can turn this this way a little bit so you can see what I'm about to do on the side. Excess wiped off. Okay, so now we're gonna do our pillar here. Um, and again, we just want to gently wipe the excess away. And you can see how it's sticking down in those details perfectly. It's, this piece is just absolutely perfect for glazing, just the right amount of detail and um, carving type, you know, elements. So I'm gently wiping these flutes here because I wanna leave that glaze down in the, the, recesses, the recessed areas of the flutes. See how I may have wiped a little bit too much away? See how it's not very consistent? That's okay. I'm gonna just go back over it with a little bit more glaze. Just like that, just in the flutes. Try to get, try to leave your hair out of it. Cause nobody wants your hair in their furniture. Just saying. All right. Get that glaze down in those flutes. And then Wipe away. You can even do the old, you know, the zest fully clean commercials. You're not fully clean and look, yeah. So you can be that gentle on, on items that you don't want to, you know, rub. And that is about exactly how we want it. So let's see if I can bring it in a little bit for a little view here of the details. Mm, let's see, oh, wrong way, this way. Um, let's see, we got a little spot there that we wanna get. There we go. All right, so the shadowing that happens is the goal, right? That uh, dark black shadowing down in there that creates the beautiful uh, um, details Make, making them pop. That's what everybody says. Make the details pop. Bring out the details. Do them justice. So in case you forgot what it looked like without the glaze, there's no glaze. Glaze. Okay, glaze. No glaze. And it's as easy as that, easy as pie. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the front. And this should be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, because it's not a whole lot of surface area to work with, right? Just a little bit of uh, crossbars, and then we'll move on to the other side, just like we did the other, um, the first column. So that's the second column. So let's go ahead and do the front, just like we did. Oh, sorry, I'm like trying to control my camera here and it's uh, apparently giving me issues here. All right, there we go. Boom. All right, so again, a little glaze and right into our details. And I like to use a chip brush to kind of pounce down in those details. You can use whatever brush you want. This is the one time I don't really have a 
specific brush that I'm like, I have got to use that for glaze. Uh, paint, I only use synthetics. Um, and you know, depending on the piece, I'll use a certain type of brush, like flat or um, oval or this or that. But for glazing, I am just like, chip brush is great. Chip brush it is. So. And the, the, the actual applying of the glaze process, it's not perfection, okay? So we're not, we're not painting this piece with the glaze, so we don't have to sit there and get every crisp little um, detail. We can just kind of wipe it on and wipe it off. Glaze on, glaze off. Okay, so now I'm gonna go down this bottom rail here. Make sure I get my glaze all up in those um, little crevices. Perfect. Okay. So front done. Now just like the um, side in the corner, I'm just going to take my cloth and lightly wipe away the excess. Easy peasy. I've seen people use baby wipes before to do this part of the process. I don't get down on that so much just because uh, baby a, ba a baby wipe is a little too wet in my for my tastes, you know. So maybe some kind of glazes that dry a lot quicker, a baby wipe would be better. But um, this paint couture has a perfect open time. Uh, the glaze couture, I'm sorry, has a perfect open time. You know, just perfect enough to get in there, get the job done, and move on. So. It's my favorite glaze. Okay, so swipe the bottom. Again, I want to make sure I'm leaving the glaze down in those details, so I'm not wiping it all completely off, just the excess. Let's get this little flat part here. Okay, the front is done. The front is done. Not a whole lot of detail going on there, so, um, you know, no biggie, no biggie. So we have one more side to do. One more pillar and one more side. Let it dry, seal it with my favorite water-based sealer, and uh, done. So that's it. That's how easy it is to glaze with the paint couture glaze. Yeah, so um, try it out. Let me know how it looks. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.